it's almost the middle of June. Is it too late to start a garden? So, is it too late to plant a garden? No, it's never too late. I say that you do what you can where you're at with what you have. So for me, that means that I am starting some of my summer plants, some of my summer crops right now, almost at the middle of June, which wasn't my plan, but I couldn't help it. The circumstances prevented me from moving any quicker than I did. I have uh, three raised beds that I've been gardening in for about, well, this will be the third year, the third summer. And I have six new raised beds that have just been installed finally in the last uh, week or so. So I've started planting those out. But I guess the advice I would want to give to anyone that's getting started, I, I can't speak as a experienced, professional, seasoned, super knowledgeable gardener because that's not what I am. I've been gardening, as I mentioned, in my current home. Um, this is the third season in the area that I'm in, but I have had a raised bed garden in a different area about 10 years ago. And prior to that, I had an in-ground garden at my previous home. And going even further back, my dad had a raised bed garden when I was a kid. But the one thing I've learned is that you can always start with something. It doesn't matter what season it is. It doesn't matter what um, your knowledge level is. Um, it doesn't matter what your available space is. You can do something. Now, that may be really um, challenging if you live in an area with a really short season. So maybe in the dead of winter, you're saying, well, what could I start? Maybe part of your gardening would be your planning of your garden. Um, maybe for you, grow lights would make a lot of sense. I fortunately have a very long season where I live. I'm in uh, Southern California and we can garden almost year round. Um, it's not always easy to garden here. When it gets really hot in the summer, I don't wanna be out here and neither do my plants. In fact, one of my jobs on my list for this weekend is to get my shade cloth in place because the plants will suffer greatly when the uh, triple digit numbers, temperature numbers hit us. They'll be, um, you know, they just get scorched. The air, even with the, the um, shade covers, the air is so hot that the, the plants really stress a lot. But I guess what I'd wanna say to maybe to the me that hadn't gardened before a few years back, and maybe if you're in those shoes is, when I say start where you're at with what you have, that includes um, knowledge of yourself. So I would say think a little bit about what kind of a time you have available to garden and start small. Don't overwhelm yourself. I think a younger me might have been of the opinion, I want a big, beautiful, lush garden and I look at magazines and think that's what I want. And sometimes some of us can bite off more than we can chew. And gardening isn't just about planting out a garden, getting it set up, it's also about maintaining the garden, uh, making sure it gets watered, making sure that you um, are watching it for pests and taking care of those as they appear. I would say that if you're really limited on budget, when I say start with what you have, um, maybe you don't have the ability to build raised beds. Maybe you'll just do some in-ground gardening or some pots. Uh, growing in pots can be very um, enjoyable and beautiful and productive. Um, if money is a challenge for you, which I know for some of us it really is with the pandemic especially, it's gotten, you know, our belts are a lot tighter. Um, but there are a lot of places you can find seeds very inexpensively. Um, there are seed banks. If you look in, in your area, perhaps you live near one. Um, at libraries where you check the seeds out and then you return seeds after you have a crop and you are able to harvest some seeds. There are dollar stores that sell seeds at very low prices. Um, friends may share seeds with you. In fact, 
I wanted to give a shout out to Brambleberry Farmstead. I'm gonna have to make sure that's the right name, but it's an Instagram account that hosts a weekly Seed Wish Day, Seed Wish Wednesday it's called. And you check in there, it's a no obligation Seed Wish. You um, just make three wishes and sometimes people grant them if they can, sometimes they can't, but um, you're under no obligation to pay it back. I always try to though, because that's what it's all about, right? If I see someone is making a wish that I can grant, I try to step in and help out. Um, there's also plant exchange groups. So if you've never um, heard of these, I actually am in a gardening class at my local community college and our professor puts together a meetup, I think usually about once, once a semester. And we just go to a Starbucks parking lot. Everybody um, opens their trunk, if you will, or takes whatever they want to trade and puts it on a tarp on the ground or on a TV tray. And there's um, no obligation to trade. You're welcome to take within reason what you want from the other um, students. And we've actually even had people show up at our swaps that just see us in the parking lot that are not part of our student group that will come and kind of help themselves. Uh, you know, I don't mind that myself as long as no one's being greedy. We had a, a teacher actually show up. She was um, a teacher at a preschool that was actually in the parking lot where the Starbucks was. And she was so excited to be able to get some seeds and some plants to share with her students. And that was a great, um, that was a great example of that. And I was happy to be able to share because, you know, that's great to get new little gardeners started. So going back to the original question, is it too late to garden? Maybe if you had in mind that you wanted to have this big, huge summer garden and you find yourself in the middle of June and you're in California and you know that's too late in a sense to start from seed, maybe you just adapt. I actually, I'm gonna turn my camera around in a second. I actually was in that dilemma myself because I had started seeds for a lot of my plants, but then when I realized my beds were delayed, I started holding off and I wasn't planting seeds for crops that I really should have started seeds for already. So because I do have gardening friends, I guess that would be another good idea. Try to get a gardening community, you know, talk to people that garden, find out what's going on, who knows what. One of my friends that is um, into gardening told me about a dollar store that I'd never heard of. It's not a chain dollar store and it's a couple of cities away from me, but they had bedding plants for $2, you know, the starts. And I got several six pack cells for $2, but then they also had some larger pots, maybe four inch pots that I was able to get some plants um, in that size as well for $2. So even though it, it hurts me in a way because I do prefer to grow from seed just because I know that's a very economical way to grow. And because I have some seeds that are really unique that I've been wanting to try. But since that didn't work out, these starts are going to be great. And I loved that I could save money, not pay, you know, full retail, which I would have to do if I went to a garden center. So I'm going to turn my camera around and show you what I've got going today. So I guess in a way, this is kind of an extension of my backyard um, garden tour video that I posted last week. I have made some progress since I made that tour. Um, this is my tomato bed area. I've got three beds here. And you'll notice that I've got a few in the uh, bed itself, but there are a few that are not. And there's a reason for that. Um, well, actually these ones have grown a lot since I started planting them out, but I've been trying to let the uh, tomato plants get larger because if you notice this one as an example, or this poor little baby right here, they're very small. And the thing I like to do with tomatoes, it's what a lot of gardeners recommend, is that you plant your tomatoes as deeply as possible. So what I'm gonna do with these plants is they get taller, pardon my shadow, is I'm going to cut off the side branches. If I've got enough of the uh, branches at the top, I'll cut off some of those side branches and then plant the tomato, you know, till it's like this one to its neck. Plant it low and deep because what'll happen is those little side branches will be where the spot where new roots will come out. 
So I'm just trying to nurse these other babies along so that they'll be tall enough that I can plant them deeply. And you'll notice that some of the plants, for example, that one back in the corner, did get stressed out while they were still in pots and they should have been planted out into the beds. So I'm hoping that they'll pick up some nutrition from these beds and start looking a little greener. I'm not going to fertilize them just now. Um, I was going to, but in my gardening class, our professor recommended, I don't normally film right now, sorry about all the shadows and weird lighting. Our professor suggested that this isn't a good time for us to fertilize here in California because we're about to hit a big heat wave. And we're, as I mentioned, we're gonna be having some triple digit temperatures and that will burn these plants. So here are two of the little pony packs that I purchased at the dollar store. They were $2 each. This one is Sweet Alyssum and that one is Marigolds. I'm hoping they're yellow. Um, even though this is a vegetable bed, I still try to do a little bit of color coordination because that makes me happy. And I think the yellow and the purple Alyssum or Lavender, the, those will look really good together. I don't keep it to a strict palette, but I try to make it look as pretty as I can for my personal pleasure. And then I got another pony pack, which I think you already saw, of basil, because even though I planted quite a lot of basil, I don't have a lot. I think that this little pack here is the only one that I really um, got much growth on. A lot of the seeds I had um, sown did not germinate. These are lettuce leaf basil, by the way, so those will grow quite large. I also put some plants that I had no business putting in, little seedlings, into the ground because they looked pretty dead, but I thought, oh, maybe they'll come back. But obviously that nasturtium is gone. So um, I've got some potatoes in a grow bag here that are doing well and starting to try to throw up flowers, so I think I'll be harvesting potatoes soon. I have another grow bag here. This is my first time growing potatoes, by the way. This grow bag is looking very sad, and I don't know if there'll be any potatoes down there. I don't know what I did wrong, honestly. I'm gonna have to do some research and figure out. I've got more tomatoes over here, although I'm intending for this bed to not um, really be a tomato bed. I just had so many seedlings and I, I really need more space for all the tomatoes I wanna grow. So all the strawberries there are for my strawberry tower that I've not assembled yet. I have a third strawberry tower to put together. I've got some calendula in this bed. Um, I have a pepper back there. It's an um, Anaheim pepper. And I have some onions here that have been in their little cell pack too long and that need to go out. But I'm gonna see if they'll continue growing if I get them into this bed. I'm always willing to experiment and try to keep things going if I can. I have one little basil in that little pony pack there, and then a few more tomatoes over here. I have not sown any seeds in this bed here. I still need to put in a yellow banana pepper. Oh, there's a monarch butterfly. And a ground cherry. I don't know how long those um, take to harvest, so hopefully, I don't know, hopefully I, I will get them in really soon. And then, in this bed, I have sown seeds. I've sown uh, patty pan squash and suit, not zucchini. Um, du it's called durrani squash. I've never grown it before. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, but that is what's been going on back here. You can see I've got my drip line all over the ground and I've got little uh, pink flags to remind me where I'm putting the half inch drip. It's currently, um, going to be fed from the same area it has been, which is in this back corner. So I'm going to drag it, not drag it, <laughs> install it across here. And then it's gonna go up behind, the half inch will go up behind the edge of this bed and come around. And then I'm going to actually <clears throat> be burying it under the gravel. So I need to get me some um, PVC piping because I'm worried about this gravel damaging the pipe or the drip line. I'm sh I know it's pretty sturdy, but with walking and gravel, I feel like that's a bad um, combination. So I'm gonna put some PVC pipe just as a sleeve around the half inch, wherever it goes under the gravel. And then you'll see I've got all these um, tall green um, stakes, supports, and they're in place waiting for um, hoops. I've got some hoops to go over them. And then I've got uh, some shade cloths 
that I'm going to be installing in all of these beds. And I'm hoping to get that done before Monday because as I mentioned, we got that hot weather coming. We'll see, we'll see how much of this can get done. It's also going to be pretty warm this weekend, even though it won't be as warm as it's going to be next week. And so that makes it kind of a challenge. I can't really work out here in midday. It's just, it's just too hot. So I will be trying to get up early. <laughs> not my, not my strong suit. I'm not a morning person, but I will try to get up early and of course work in the evenings as long as the sun holds out to get the drip installed and get those arches in and the, <laughs> oh, that's a big hand, and uh, the shade cloth, and of course put in the rest of the plants. So thanks for checking me out. Um, I would love to have you subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. And if you liked this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. See you next time.